Okay. All right, I went ahead and recorded the meeting. Our upcoming presentations next month, we have Jeffrey, and Jeffrey will speak about designing an online class to deliver extension programs. He's gonna talk a lot about what worked and what didn't, and I think this will be a great one because many of us are looking to design online courses or even presenting Master Gardener classes or classes for the public and maybe a hybrid format. So this may be of interest to you. Then again, in June, we have Sherry joining us again, and she'll talk about motivations of Master Gardener volunteers. And then in July, Charlotte will speak about volunteer retention. <coughs> and volunteer retention is a topic that I think all of us could learn new, new tips and strategies um, for working with. So please uh, tune into those. And if you could just take a moment to write in the chat box which state you're from. Let us know where you're all joining us from. So we have Oregon, Connecticut, Virginia, Maine, North Carolina, Florida, Maryland, New Jersey, Virginia. All right, thanks everyone. We are really happy to have you here with us today. So I'd like to introduce our speakers, John Freeborn and Devin Johnson. John is the Assistant Master Gardener Coordinator at Virginia Tech, and Devin Johnson is the Communications Coordinator for the Virginia Extension Master Gardener State Office. And when they were you know, tuning into the webinar today, I was talking to John and Devin about how lucky they are to actually have a Communications Coordinator. I wish I had one here to help us out with our Extension marketing efforts. Um, but today, Virginia and, I'm sorry, John and Devin are gonna talk about the Virginia Extension Master Gardener Communication Survey results and the techniques. And so they're gonna go over some social media basics and give us strategies that they use that may be able to assist us with our Extension Master Gardener programming as well. So John and Devin, are you ready? Mm-hmm, yep. Okay. We're ready. All right, take it away. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and start this um, part of the presentation and then let Devin talk about some of the survey results specifically. But at first, maybe just a little bit about um, Devin's position. And um, Devin's position as our communications coordinator is one that, that we feel is, is critical and essential for the program. It started off years ago um, just as, as a wage position filled with some student help but since then it has progressed um, to Devin's position now, and it's something that uh, we, we rely on her expertise all of the time, and also folks out in the field with our, with our different programs uh, also utilize Devin's help to help in marketing and advertising, and then she will bring this um, social media component as well as she gets into some of the survey results. But just to give you uh, an overview of Virginia, uh, we have 62 different units across the state, and those range in size from just a few master gardeners in, in maybe a rural area um, to single municipalities. Then we get into bigger units that may have multiple counties. Uh, some cover up to five counties, uh, go anywhere from eight master gardeners in a very small unit to north of 200 in some of our larger uh, units, which are primarily in the urban areas. Uh, which I assume is similar across across the country. Uh, we've got about 5,000 full-time master gardeners. If you broke those numbers out, you'd probably see about 4,000 and change of um, certified master gardeners, 400 to 500 trainees, uh, 500 to 600 interns, somewhere in there, and then uh, about 200 emeritus. So that's kind of the breakdown. And our program has been relatively stable for about the last seven or eight years. Uh, before that, it was in a growth pattern. We've experienced a little bit of growth in the last, uh, in about the last year or two. So I see that as a positive, but the stability is, is something that we also take as a positive because we aren't looking to be the biggest program by any stretch, um, but we are looking for, for quality. Um, just as another overview, when we talk about some of our previous communications, um, we have an, a network of agents and coordinators. Um, our coordinators can be volunteer coordinators and may also be paid coordinators. And when I started with the program a few years ago, the primarily, primary communication method was, was based by email. Um, there was a quarterly newsletter, and then emails were sent from the state office to the agents and, and coordinators, and then those were expected to be forwarded to volunteers. 
And so as we went through a strategic planning process, one of the large items that came up um, was actually voted into the top three priorities for us to work on at, at the state level was improving communications and finding some, some different and better ways to communicate. So we started doing that, and that's what this slide here talks about. Um, we have a quarterly newsletter, we call, call it In Season. We do a bi-weekly email update, which comes from our office, and so that's a compilation of all events and activities that are submitted to us from across the state. We tend to have about 15, 10 to 15 new items each two weeks on that email update. And at the suggestion of, of our agents and coordinators, we send that directly to the volunteers um, from the state office. And that's been a big help in communication and has taken some of the burden off of the agents and coordinators. We do have uh, special list serves just for one is agent and coordinators and one is agent uh, and paid coordinators only. So depending on the material, we are kind of select where those things go. But we do communicate directly with the volunteers. And some of the other communications pieces that we developed after that strategic planning session um, was a new website. We started a Facebook page and Instagram. And so we, we didn't really have any set goals with any of those, but we knew we wanted to develop them and, and work on them, start to get some, some people following us on those different places. We also had a webinar series that we started then. And so we, we were like sometimes an extension. We, we, did some, we did some good work, but we weren't sure where we were going. And we also weren't sure that our information was getting out to our end users, um, whether that was agents, coordinators, or volunteers. Were they finding it? Um, as we went through and developed different templates and different resources that could be utilized by master gardeners, we didn't even know if they were finding it. Part of the way that we discovered that was we might design a flyer for a unit and they wouldn't be able to locate that or didn't even know it existed. And so we're having just a little technical difficulty here. Here we go. So these are just examples of things that came from the field to our office and Devin's position helped to develop these flyers. And so our, our, you know, our process for that was we could get a request locally, we could expand that to scale it up for statewide use and make it a template that was modifiable at, at the unit level. And so these were some of the things, but I would get emails and they'd say, oh, could you make a flyer for me? Could you do this? And I said, well, we already have that, but it was this fact about not knowing. And so we decided we needed to poll people and, and do just a, a brief, it's fairly informal survey, um, but we wanted to find out exactly how people were learning about the things that we had, what could we do better, what pieces of, of our existing communications were they receiving? Um, so this was all sort of happening last fall, right around the time that um, I started my position. Um, and as John said, the state office already had a bunch of great resources um, that they were providing for people out in the state. And so one of the first things that I thought about and that I wanted to do um, was assess how well those things were being received in the state and awareness of all of those different um, products that we're sharing with people. Um, so one of the first things that I did in my position was this communication survey. Um, and I did just see a question about sharing the survey and um, we definitely have some resources that we can make available um, at the end of this if anyone is interested. Um, but we were also sort of entering a strategic planning process and revisiting maybe our brand and just generally updating our communication strategy um, at the beginning of when I started my position and we started thinking about doing a survey. Let's see if we can get the slide to advance. Yeah, the, the slides are just a, are very slow to advance from our end, but we will we will get there. Okay, there um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the results of the survey, um, and I pulled specifically data that I thought might be um, of interest or use to the rest of y'all um, out across the country. Um, so the first important thing about our survey was the demographics of respondents. So we sent this out to everyone on our listserv, which includes um, master gardeners, interns, agents, coordinators, and then emeritus um, or trainees. And so you can see this distribution here, the vast majority of people who responded to the survey were master gardeners. Um, and we also had a fair number of coordinators and agents. Um, and that, that distribution is 
relatively representative of the distribution across the whole state. So um, an actual, actually a substantial portion of um, our coordinators and agents from across the state did respond to this survey. It's almost half of them. Um, and so that just kind of adds some val validity to our results and shows that we got feedback from lots of different kinds of diverse stakeholders. Um, so the next question that we asked, um, we asked respondents to self-identify if they had any um, administrative duties related to handling social media or their unit's website or anything like that on the local county or unit level. Um, so this slide represents um, the use of different kinds of social media platforms by our different local county units. And you can see 117 respondents answered this question and there were 241 responses. So most of the people who answered and said that, yes, I help with my unit's website or blog or whatever, um, had units that were, they were using more than one of these different kinds of communications platforms. And you can see um, most of the units that answer this question are using um, a website to promote their program or a newsletter or Facebook. Um, and so that kind of helps us shape if we're thinking about providing resources to units to help them with their local communications efforts, then we should be focusing on providing resources related to websites or newsletters or Facebook. Um, and maybe we don't need to focus as heavily on some of these other areas. Um, so we also asked the same subset of survey respondents who had previously identified as having communications related responsibilities, um, what kinds of training topics they were interested in, and probably it's no surprise, um, a lot of people were interested in having help with managing websites um, or with digital publishing and kind of social media responsibilities. Um, so that's also helpful because it has helped us think about what kinds of training resources we can offer people. Um, it's kind of helped shape when I'm doing presentations at our um, yearly conference in Blacksburg, our Master Gardener College event, um, or leadership trainings throughout the state, then I can use these desires for different kinds of communications training to help shape those presentations. So this is just helpful because it's given us an idea of how we can best help people um, on the local level who have communications duties. Um, so the rest of the data that I'm going to share with you is just general responses to our survey. Um, this is a pretty um, standard one just about personal social media use among the um, volunteers and coordinators and everyone who answered our survey. You can see most of the people that answered um, are using Facebook. Um, and this we did last fall, so I don't know if their responses would be different right now. <laughs> um, but you can see the, the most popular platform by far was Facebook and Pinterest, and then there were also quite a few people who did not use social media. Um, so that's also important because it tells us that we can't rely solely on social media if we're trying to communicate with our demographic of volunteers. Um, that being said, we are also aware that we have kind of a dual audience. So we have the need to communicate with our volunteers um, and coordinators throughout the state, but then we also want to be communicating with the public and promoting the Master Gardener, the Virginia Master Gardener program directly to the Virginia public and people who might be interested in gardening. Um, so this distribution of platforms doesn't really represent the final communications plan that we've developed. Um, we're still using Instagram and Twitter to a certain degree, even though most of our volunteers are not using those. Um, so another question we asked was how did respondents find out about the Master Gardener program? And this we kind of just asked thinking it might be interesting or we might not know what we're going to get. Um, and we were all surprised, I think, to see that so many respondents said that they found out about the Master Gardener program through the newspaper. Um, and that has actually turned out to be a, a relatively important finding from this study because um, it's made me aware that we need to think about providing resources to local units for writing press releases um, or getting themselves featured in their local newspaper. And so that's something that um, might not, we might not have realized otherwise. Um, and just to describe this little chart thing, so the size of the word there um, is related to the number of people who 
um, answered using that word in their free response. So people typed in, oh, I found about, out about the program in the newspaper, um, or I found out from a friend, um, and those are, those are the largest words, and they're therefore the most popular responses. Um, so word of mouth and newspaper were pretty common in here, um, and then different people uh, said, oh, I found that from a coworker in my office or a friend um, or like the county extension office. Um, and so if you're thinking about doing a survey, I would definitely recommend that you ask um, some kind of question about how you found out about the program or got involved, because that, that has been um, one of the more unexpected and useful findings from our survey. Um, so future plans, when we started doing this communication survey, a big part of it was to um, shape our communication strategy going forward. As I said, we're moving into another strategic planning session um, this year. And so we're kind of thinking about ways we can set goals for ourselves and um, expand the kinds of communications resources we're offering. Um, and so in this section, I'm gonna talk specifically about two things that we thought would be interesting and useful for y'all. Um, so the first one is benchmarking and having a critical approach to social media. And then the second thing is encouraging and supporting local units. Um, and there's definitely other aspects of our communication strategy for the future. Um, but we just pulled out these two things in the interest of time and not having an extremely boring and long um, presentation. Um, these are two things that we thought might be particularly interesting and useful to you. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is benchmarking for social media. Um, when we did that survey and we thought about how we wanted to use our social media platforms moving forward, one of the first things that we did is think about benchmarking. So benchmarking is the process of comparing your own process and performance metrics to industry bests or best practices from other companies. Um, and this is really a concept like most kind of social media um, managing theories that comes from industry um, and for profit, the for profit world. Um, but there's no reason that we can't apply it to um, programs that are doing a social good as well. Um, so the way that we set out to set our benchmarks is to compare ourselves to similar organizations um, and different social media accounts that are similar to us in some way. So um, we went through and identified a few different Facebook pages from sort of comparable gardening related Virginia um, based programs. And we looked at what they post about, how often they post, what kind of engagement statistics they get on different types of posts. And we just sort of use that to, to gauge where we want to be or where we might try and get within the next year. And that's just a good idea. Um, in terms of establishing, you know, like how much growth you want to have or where you want your social media pages to end up at in the long run. Um, so you can set up, this is like a helpful handy tip here. Um, if any of you manage Facebook pages for your local unit, or if you have a volunteer who does it for you, um, or an intern or something like that, um, you should be able to go to this insights tab on your Facebook page, which probably hopefully you already know about. Um, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of that insights tab, you can set up your Facebook pages to watch. And so this is just an example from um, the way we have our setup, and you can see our number one page watches the National Extension Master Gardening Program. And so this each week will give you, um, it'll pull like the number of likes on each of these pages that you have set up, um, the statistics on their engagement, and then the, num the number of posts that they had that week. And it'll rank you. Um, it'll rank your page compared to all those other pages. So this is just a good way um, if you happen to be looking at your Facebook Insights page to quickly get an idea of how you compare to other organizations that you've identified as being relevant or important to you. Um, so that's just a tip. Um, and there's lots of super cool things you can do with the Facebook Insights tab. Um, I encourage you, if you are responsible for man managing a Facebook page, to spend some time clicking around in there because it will give you some um, pretty cool insights into what your um, followers are doing with your page. Um, 
So we set a couple goals for Facebook based on all of this data collection that we did looking at comparable Facebook pages. We set goals for how often we wanted to post, the types of posts um, we thought would be most productive for us to focus on. So when I say types of posts, I mean like um, picture posts, um, link posts, or video content. And Facebook ranks all of those differently in their algorithm. So if you um, look at the engagement metrics that you get on each of those different types of posts, it'll give you a little bit of an idea of um, how many people those posts are reaching. So for example, for us, photo posts tend to reach a lot more people and we also get a lot more shares on them. Um, and therefore we've started sharing a lot more different images and infographic types of posts. And then we also sent goals for the number of followers that we'd like to have within a year and um, engagement statistics. Um, so I've talked a little bit about Facebook insights. Um, in case you're not aware of these other things, uh, there's also Instagram for business, Pinterest for business, and then um, Twitter analytics and Google analytics, which probably a lot of people are using already, but if you don't know about them, um, you can set up your Facebook insights and your Instagram for business accounts to link to one another. Um, and that's really the only way to get statistics for Instagram is to have it linked to your Facebook account. Um, but if you do that, Instagram for business will provide you all this exact same kinds of analytics that you can get for Facebook. Um, you could also set up Pinterest for business if that's an important part of your social media strategy. Um, it's not really for us, but I've gone ahead and set up all these things just in the interest of having them. You never know one day if you're going to want to start using these things. It's good to just have it set up and have it have been collecting data for a while. Um, Twitter analytics is really easy to set up. You just go to that website and click enroll in Twitter analytics and it will um, start generating analytics for all of your tweets. And then Google analytics, probably Google analytics is the most important um, of all these things. And that's um, allows you to collect statistics on your website. So we've used that for our website. Um, and it has told us a lot of different things. One of them is that people actually read our bi-weekly updates. Um, when we send out our bi-weekly update, we include a link to our um, website page where we post the same information. Um, and you can see a spike like the two days after we send out that update, our website traffic increases substantially. Um, and so that has told us that people are actually reading that update um, and that they're also reading it on our website. So that's good to know. And Google Analytics will just tell you a lot of helpful things. If you don't have it set up for your <clears throat> website currently, um, depending on if you're like at a large state institution, um, it's likely that someone has already set it up for whatever your website is and you just need to ask for permission to see that data. If you're at sort of a smaller like county office, um, you might have to set it up yourself, but it's, it's super easy to do. Um, so analytics we collect, um, this is an example of the spreadsheet that I've been using to collect all of that data that I just talked about. <clears throat> um, and so this spreadsheet right here is for Facebook, but I have the same kind of thing for our website. And I am collecting this data just as an accountability thing so we can look at our growth over the long term. Um, and then also for reporting contacts at the end of the year. Um, in Virginia, we need to report um, the reach of all of our different posts. So this is an easy way of adding up reach at the end of the year. Um, but I've been collecting data on engaged users, reach, likes and unlikes, um, the types of posts that are particularly successful, and then link clicks. So we share a lot of links to extension publications, and it's just nice to know that like, people are actually reading those and clicking on our links and using them to make their gardening lives better. Um, so this is just an example of how you can do that. I'm sure that um, you know, for-profit companies with gigantic social media departments do this in a much more thorough way, um, but just for us, this is a good way to do it. And you can see over here um, our most popular posts this year. Um, that the one that John is pointing the little clicker to was an extension publication about starting seeds, um, and that reached 30,000 people, which is a lot more than most of our posts reach on average. Um, and so that's just a good indication of um, the kind of content that is most productive for us to share.
and what we can most valuably spend our time doing. So another important aspect of this, let me just grab a drink of water. Um, another important aspect of keeping track of your social media is scheduling and planning in advance. Um, so scheduling posts in advance saves you time in the long run, and it also makes it easier to meet some of those goals about the types of content that you want to share, um, time of day you want to share it, and then you can um, set it up to post, for example, when most of your followers are online. So it's just a good way to really milk the time that you're spending setting up your social media for everything you can get out of it. Um, so you can put this on a regular calendar and just remember to post, or you can use a scheduling app. So, um, so you can use a variety of different kinds of apps. Hootsuite is one that we use, but there's, <laughs> there's a few more. Um, I would I like Hootsuite. Yeah, a couple other people are saying that they use Hootsuite to schedule things um, because you can set up posts to publish automatically to all of your platforms. So it really just you're not spending time duplicating posting something to Facebook and then also typing and posting the same thing to Twitter. Um, you can send it everywhere at once. And it's free for up to three accounts and 30 scheduled posts at a time, which is plenty for a Master Gardener program kind of organization. Um, so it's just a free resource that you can use um, and you can set it up to do like your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram account, which is what we have. Um, but you can also set it up for other types of social media if that's what your, um, what your organization has decided to use. Let's see if we, if we'll advance. Um, so this is an example of Hootsuite. If you're already using it, then you probably are familiar with the interface. I would not say it's the most user-friendly interface. Um, there's tons of different kinds of data you can set Hootsuite up to collect. Um, this is how I have ours set up. Um, you can see over on that far left-hand column, there is, um, this is all of our scheduled posts. So this um, is stuff that, that is gonna be posted automatically. Um, and then the timeline column is how our feed looks right now. This is stuff that's already been posted. Then I also have it set up to show messages that we get. Actually, we do get a fair number of direct messages on Facebook that are gardening related questions or how can I join the Master Gardener program questions. Um, and I would say if you go to the trouble of setting up a Facebook page, you need to uh, monitor the messages. That's kind of a uh, increasingly important element of customer service is responding to messages on social media. So if you've done, gone to the trouble of setting up a Facebook page, just make sure you check the inbox once in a while. Um, and then page activity. If someone leaves you a comment or um, tries to post something on your page, which we've actually disabled, it'll show you in this activity column. And it's, it's a good way to monitor comments. Um, if people comment and have questions about something, I usually try and respond. Um, in a timely way. So the other important component that I wanted to talk to you all about um, is supporting local units. I'm going to finish up here real quick. Um, so in addition to streamlining the way that we do social media and thinking critically about the data that we want to get from social media and if we're really meeting our goals, providing resources to support local units is another element of um, our communication strategy moving forward. So we send people to the Extension social media training site if um, we get questions from units who need help managing social media accounts, we send them to that training site and then we also have supplementary state guidelines on um, like how they can use our logo, indicia statement guidelines and things like that. Um, and then we also try to offer resources based on what units are already doing. So I showed you that poll where we asked units to indicate what, what kinds of communications they use. A lot of people use newsletters, and so we're going to think about offering resources for newsletters. Oops. Um, and this is just an example of the local state office social media guidelines that we pr um, provide for people in addition to that 
um, national extension training module. Um, on the left there is our old website. Um, it had some information about social media guidelines, kinds of content you should be posting, um, how to use our logo. I'm working on a new communications training resource site, and um, it's gonna have the same information and some more detailed information about social media. So some takeaways, um, think critically about social media, consider setting some database benchmarks so you can see if you're really getting what you wanna get out of the time you spend on social media, um, and then use post scheduling because it will cut down on the amount of time that you're spending. Um, another important takeaway, which goes back to that idea of Master Gardeners finding out about the Master Gardener program through newspapers, um, don't focus on new media to the detriment of other communications tools like press releases or print marketing temp materials. Um, so John showed some of those print marketing materials that we have historically offered to people. Um, and we have some new ones as well. Um, and all of these marketing materials are branded consistently. So that's another important consideration. Um, you want the state office to be branded coherently and consistently. So people who live throughout the state have better brand recognition. And this is an example of um, some of our branding work. Um, we've paid attention to this in the past and as part of our new um, strategic planning efforts, we're revisiting it now. Um, ensure, it's the last takeaway is ensure all communications uh, brand, are branding consistently and then offering more training and unit support. So, for example, we have um, this little infographic, which we just created, I think, last week and sent out to all of our units. Um, and you can see it kind of fits with those other branding materials um, and the color scheme and kind of this like institutional quality. Um, but we went through and put these together for each different unit um, and county office and sent it out to them. So this is just a way of supporting units and providing something for them that they didn't have to spend um, time and money and resources making for themselves. Um, and so that's the last kind of maybe the most important thing is to support the local units and make sure they have what they need to succeed. Um, and I have seen a bunch of questions, which you may answer. Um, marketing in other languages. So that is something that I have thought about because we do have a fair number of um, units where the population is, um, a substantial amount of the population in those counties is not English speaking. Um, and I know on the county level, they have tried to provide resources um, in other languages. Um, I'm not that is definitely something that is going to come up with our strategic planning is how we can be better about marketing in other languages. It's not easy to do on social media. I'm, I don't speak any language other than English. And if, if I did, though, I would definitely be posting things in other languages. Um, kind of that gets to the question of ADA accessibility. Facebook is pretty good about ADA accessibility. Um, you just kind of have to make sure that you go through some extra steps when you post like videos um, that, that they're ADA accessible. So that's another important consideration is in addition to making sure you're inclusive to people who are not um, English speakers, to people who um, have special needs. Um, I don't really think that answered your question, but we, we don't really have an answer. We're working on that as well. Um, Yeah, Susan is saying um, don't just put the exact same post on Facebook and Twitter. That's good advice. Um, occasionally, if I'm posting a link or something like that to Facebook, it overlaps enough with the kind of content that we are posting to Twitter that I'll just go ahead and click the Twitter button. So for every once in a while, you'll get a post that is easy to share to both platforms without having to do a lot of extra work. But Hootsuite is good about... Um, allowing you to edit content for different platforms and streams. So that's a very good point, Susan. Um, and then Susan also says that she schedules posts to go out um, at different times on weekdays. You can go into um, the Facebook Insights tab and you can look at when most of your followers are online. It'll show you like a little graph, a line graph of when most of your followers are online. 
Um, and I've kind of used that to shape when we share posts. For us, most of our followers are online in the evenings. So I try and share um, Facebook posts in like the late afternoon or early evening, um, like around the time that people might be getting home and um, after they eat dinner, opening up Facebook to look at things. Um, but that might, that might be different for your um, Facebook audience. Um, the strategic planning, um, Nick's question, um, our strategic plan was just for the Extension Master Gardener program um, at the state level in Virginia. Uh, so that includes what we can do at the state office level to promote the Master Gardener program throughout the state and then also what kinds of um, resources and tools we can offer to the local unit offices. So it's kind of like a two-part um, strategic plan for trying to make the whole program better. Um, and then Rich says, can you share the survey with us? Probably, yeah. Um, we can share the questions that we asked if that would be helpful to people. Um, yeah, I can pull that from Qualtrics. Devin and John, this is Nicole. If you want to send me the survey questions, I can package that with the PDF of this presentation and then put that on the Extension Master Gardener site and send that to the group. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, um, and we used Qualtrics, which is the survey software that Virginia Tech subscribes to, but I'm sure you can ask the same questions in a free version of mm -hmm. whatever kind of survey, survey software there is out there. Does anyone else have questions? Uh, I just had a couple of comments. Um, I like the spreadsheet that you use where you're tracking engagement uh, for each post and then which articles, you know, got the most interest. I think that the way you've presented it is a, a good way to show, you know, the work that you're doing for an entire year, which sometimes is difficult with social media. So I don't know if you're interested in sharing a blank version of your spreadsheet or something similar. Maybe we could put that out to the group too for people um, maybe want to compare and contrast what they're doing. And um, even for folks starting out as new coordinators, that could be helpful to them. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can send you the spreadsheet. Um, and then I also have instructions on how to find all of the data that goes into the spreadsheet as well. So I can send you both of those things. All right. I think that would be super helpful to people, including me. Um, I also liked your suggestions to go into the insights and look at the pages to watch. I don't do that on our Facebook page, so I learned that from you guys today. Uh, I don't know if anyone else currently does that. If you do, you could put, you know, yes, I'm doing that in the chat box, or um, if you intend to, that'd be interesting for us to find out. And my other comment is I really like your infographic that promotes the work that your volunteers do in different counties. I also found it interesting that you included the miles that they drive and that you're sharing this with people. And with this particular infographic, do you all post this on your social media pages as well? Do you share that just with stakeholders? How do you use this infographic? Um, so the one that's up on the screen right now, we sent out to our, um, I think the agents and coordinators. Mm -hmm. um, as a, something that they might want to print out for their office and give to like county officials or um, other administrative or, or the members of the public in their counties. Um, I haven't shared any of these um, unit specific infographics on our social media account, but I have seen social media accounts for units throughout the state share their own. And that, that was really kind of our intention was just to give different units throughout the state a way of advertising the work that they do. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Do we oh, have yeah. any other questions? Um, I see Rich says that his county's program Facebook page is run by volunteers. That's the case, I think, for a lot of our um, Facebook pages for different counties um, throughout Virginia. And that's one of the reasons that we're trying to develop some resources and tools um, to help those volunteers manage those pages more efficiently. Um, and then sharing the infographic with you. Um, sure. I, we so kind of, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what format to put this infographic in. Um, it's a PowerPoint right now, and what I did was um, to use that um, PowerPoint master view, where you can make certain elements like unclickable and uneditable. So um, I can send that with a little description of um, how to do that if you're interested in it. And 
One other note about that, Nicole, too, you'd ask about the miles driven. And so some of our units collect that data and some don't, um, but one of them actually had um, grant dollars received as one of their pieces of information. But Devin had set that up to be editable locally. So all they have to do is just go in there and they can change the text and the numbers um, and the little icon there if they wanted to change it to, to represent something else that they had done. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or if they wanted to change like the date or something like that on it. Yeah, that's a great point. And then I noticed in the chat box that Ann Yasalonis says that she has an infographic that she uses to show impact in her county. Um, her advisory committee shares it and they send it to county officials. So Ann, if you want to send that to me, then I can package all this stuff together and share it as a resource with the entire group. Yeah, we would love to see that. I, I would love to see some of the other things that states are doing. Okay, do we have any other questions for John or Devin on communication strategies, how to use social media in your extension Master Gardener programs, any questions about Facebook insights or anything else? Okay. Hey, this is really this is really great. Devin could teach you about anything, and there's no questions at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I think there might be more questions once people get all these resources. I, I believe the resources are going to be very helpful, and that's something that sort of came out of this is folks are saying, let me see the infographic, or can you share that survey or that spreadsheet? So um, we can put all that stuff together, and I think that will help a lot of people maybe improve their existing um, social media programs and uh, extension Master Gardener communication so thank you guys well, thank you so much thank you nicole for hosting these yeah. uh, i know no, that's no, no small effort <laughs> you're welcome all right so before we end the call and stop the recording i just want to let you all know that i'll record the webinar and we're posted on the extension master gardener youtube channel it's here on this slide but then i'll also send that out to the group um and last month's um webinar recording. I was having a little bit of trouble with that. Um, so I'm trying to still sort that out through Zoom, but as soon as I get that fixed, I will post it as well. And then if you know any other Master Gardener coordinators or folks that could benefit from these webinars, you could ask them to join our community of practice and they would go to extension.org and create an extension.org account. When you sign up for this, it gets you the updates on the webinars. It also helps you subscribe to the e-news blasts from John and then it also will get you aware of any upcoming opportunities or webinars or conferences that could uh, be helpful to you. So I just encourage everyone to join the community of practice and share this information with new Master Gardener coordinators and other folks that could benefit as well. Okay, and I thank you all for tuning in today and I'll go ahead and stop the recording and post this in a little while. So thank you, John and Devin. We all learned a lot from you today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys have a great day, and I'll follow up with you, uh, John and Devin, by email, okay? Okay, that sounds All great. Right. Thanks, Nicole. Right. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, you're welcome.